Are you the hundredth monkey? Will your awareness be the one that tips the scales? You're listening to the hundredth monkey radio with Tom and Ramon on the Truth Frequency Radio Network. Uh, welcome back to the Hundredth Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. Uh, Chris, we uh, kind of uh, while you were giving out your website and where people could get the book, you kind of got walked on by the uh, music there. Would you uh, please uh, share that with the audience again, please? Yeah, Tom. Thanks. Sure thing. It's um, uh, the the Cristo Revelations is currently out of print. Um, editing and adding a few things and uh, kind of beefing up the chapter about Renato Longato. And uh, that'll be available in a couple months. But my other book that I'm probably actually a little better known for is uh, The Sacred Science of Yoga and the Five Koshas. And that's on Amazon and Kindle. And you can just go to Amazon and uh, type in Five Koshas. And uh, that's K-O-S-H-A-S. And um, it'll come right up. And my webpage is called CrestoneYogaInstitute.com, and you can find out more information about the yoga teacher trainings that we do and uh, our meditation retreats and, and all that good stuff. Cool, cool. Well, uh, I want to uh, treat you guys all to a per- special guest tonight we happen to have on here who uh, did uh, agreed to come on here last minute earlier today. I got a hold of him, and he said, sure, why the hell not? Santos Bonacci, I think everybody here knows you quite well. How in the heck are you? Oh, great, Tom. Much, much, much better. I uh, just come from a come out of a poisoning t- fluoride Teflon utensil poisoning. Uh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man. Oh yeah. I um, I rarely eat uh, a lot of cooked stuff. I'm pretty much raw, raw foodist, but. Uh, I had a meal cooked in a Teflon pan about a month ago, and immediately after that happened, I got uh, I got knocked flat with the flu. It lasted six hours, the most violent flu I've ever had in my life. And uh, I just wondered to myself, why is it that I'm always getting flus? Anyway, someone sent me uh, uh, an article about Teflon utensils and DuPont's... Um, disclaimer about using their utensils. Uh, they admit that fumes called C8 fumes uh, are released by cooking on Teflon utensils and they give you flu-like symptoms, but they are reversible. Oh, thank God, DuPont. <laughs> thank you very much. Reversible flu-like symptoms. It's great when you get flu and you can reverse it. It's just brilliant. Um, <laughs> you know, so... That's their legal out, so you can't sue them. Pretty much what Philip Morris does when you buy a packet of cigarettes, they tell you that you're going to die of cancer if you smoke, so um, so you can't sue them. But um, I was very lucky that that caught my eye, that attention, uh, uh, that article, and uh, I was so fortunate because I would probably still be cooking my breakfast every morning with my favourite little Teflon pot, which I've been doing for years. Hmm, hmm. You know, I've actually heard I heard about Teflon poisoning years and years ago, and I just kind of shrugged it off as you know, oh, it's just somebody being paranoid. You know, but I mean, and and to be honest, I still have a couple of Teflon pans in the cupboard myself. You know, I'm trying to get all the stainless, which uh, my uh, my girlfriend is helping me uh, push towards a lot healthier type stuff like that, but. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff out there like that that will definitely sneak up and bite you in the ass in this world if you don't pay attention. Absolutely, Tom. Absolutely. You've got to pay attention. I thought I was on top of these things, uh, but there's always something. My brother was shocked. He said, what the hell? Didn't you know? I knew that years ago. Mum threw out her aluminium pots, but she didn't make a fuss about Teflon. And if she had of, because I, mom, my mother was always on the, on the money. She did not let us have sugar as children. She did not vaccinate us as children. She always made a home, um, you know, uh, coarse grain bread, which was embarrassing to take at school because people thought we were just freaks. We'd have spinach sandwiches with whole milk, 
you know, spelt bread, for instance. Hmm. Uh, Mum was right on top of it, but but there you go. This one slipped my attention, and I'm glad because I was able to post it on Facebook and warned many, many people. Yeah. Uh, many who were surprised that I didn't know, since I, you know, <laughs> right, I do, right. I do a lot of this uh, exposing myself, really, on the radio. I'm always exposing something or, or another, but uh, this one, fortunately, I grabbed. Uh, and I'm feeling so much better now. All my vitality is coming back. I can feel it in my muscle tone. I can feel it in everything. I'm just getting stronger by the day. Oh, that's great. That's good to hear. So uh, besides that, what have you been up to lately? I, I uh, uh, know you've been doing a lot of radio and that sort of thing. Uh, anything else in the works? Well, I'm going to Ecuador for the whole of May. Uh, we're going to make a documentary on syncretism in Ecuador. And then in June, I think I'm going to Italy uh, for a month or so. That may not um, transpire though that might not take place because it's still a bit iffy but this one's all locked in uh, flights uh, have been booked already uh, and then in August I'm doing Truth Juice in the UK so Truth Juice is going to be a biggie in the UK this year I'm going over there for August and then hopefully in October or November go to Egypt to do a speaking tour with the Kemet School of Ancient Mysticism, which I was supposed to do last year, but it was cancelled. Holy crap, dude. Are you ever going to take a break? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Until I will, I, will, I will rest when the bar are behind bars, when uh, the pedophile priests have been prosecuted, PPP, pedophile priest prosecuted, <laughs> the like bar that. behind bars, and the Vatican are totally defunct. Then I'll have a rest. But until such time, I will be out there working every day, 24 hours a day, to smash the fictions. And these are the three worst enemies that we have on the planet. The bar, the priest, and the Vatican, which is basically right. the bankers. Right. So, uh, Santos, we have Chris online with us. And, Chris, I want to make sure you know if you want to speak up anytime you want to, and if you have a question you want to throw at Santos, please don't be shy. Uh, we're just three guys sitting here having a, uh, having a chat. So, Man, I would, I would love to ask Santos about something. Um, first of all, Santos, I mean, you're... You're one of my, my teachers, you know, I'd, I'd sit here and obsess over your YouTube videos and just like, I, it's hard for me to process all this information. Um, one thing that really, uh, one thing that was really special for me is something that you articulated so eloquently that I just couldn't really put into form, couldn't put into words, couldn't get thought forms around it. And that's the notion that the nectar, the soma, the philosopher's stone, um, whatever you want to call it, actually is created, and please correct me if I miss any of this, but is, is, is created actually <clears throat> in the brain and then makes its way down the spine first until it sort of seeds or catalyzes the kundalini um, at the base of the spine, which then is able to rise up the spine, but it takes first the creation of the soma in the brain in order to drip down the spine or the shishum, the nadi, or what have you, and sort of impregnate uh, the, the sleeping serpent and, and rest the, the sleeping dragon from its, its cave as it makes its way up the spine um, to the crown chakra, which, is, which leads to the uh, sort of kundalini awakening or enlightenment experience. And prior to, prior to that, yeah, I'd never ha heard this notion that... Um, the, the soma was was created in the brain and and and, and, and impregnated the the kundalini as it were. I've, I've had experiences meditating where uh, the soma sort of drips into your mouth and you can taste it. And anybody that meditates long enough, you know, has this experience. But the idea that it could make its way all the way down to the base of the spine and impregnate the kundalini, which then rises up the spine to create the kundalini awakening, was was new to me, but makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. So if you yeah, just it, maybe elaborate on that a bit. Or... 
Well, it does, you know, uh, and and um, the best way to to uh, enrich your understanding of this beautiful biochemical process, which is called uh, ascension, you see, you, you transmute your lead into gold um, in in your own body. It's it's the elixir of life is in the body, and you just explain, you just described it, you just described it very briefly, but that's about it. Uh, but for, for the listeners who want to really deepen their understanding of this, a great book to begin with would be God Man hyphen The Word Made Flesh by George W. Carey, C A R E Y. Now, in here he explains Santa Claus, Jesus, Samson, and all of these archetypes. Santa Claus. If you if you um, if you're a, a doctor, an anatomist, you would know that you have a claustrum in the middle of your cerebrum, and that claustrum is also known as the Santa claustrum or the Holy claustrum, and that's for the reason that this beautiful holy cerebral fluid is produced there, and this the other names for this fluid is manna in the Hebrew system, in the Greek system Christos. Yes, you heard it, Christ. Um, in biochemists called chrism, C H R I S M, the ancient Romans called it wax, hence cerebrum, because ceres means wax. Hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, so this wax or this oil, this Christ fluid, is so important it's secreted from the cerebrum and it and it gets differentiated at the pineal gland and at the pituitary gland in the third ventricle then it descends further it goes down to the sacrum so already it, you see half of the process it descends goes down to the sacrum this is why santa sacred. claus goes you got the sacred exactly keep that in mind because down the bottom of your spine you have the sacred area you have the sacral plexus for instance it's a ganglion of nerve, it, nerve endings. It's a plex, it's like a magnetic brain. There are seven of these plexuses on the spinal, cerebrospinal system. And they're just sub brains, if you like. They act like brains. The spinal cord is like an extension of the brain. And so this sacred plexus, right down the bottom of the spine, the oil goes down to there. Then every month when the moon transits your, your, your natal sun sign, in my case, Aries. I was born today. It's my birthday. I'm 50 years old. I'm Arian. When the moon is in Aries, there will be a psychophysical germ planted in the solar plexus just above the sacred plexus. And that solar plexus is otherwise known as Bethlehem, where the little Christ, the chrism oil, is born every month. So the moon generates a seed within us. It's a spiritual seed. And when we ascend that oil, we send it back up to the thalamus so that we can reactivate dormant brain cells in the cerebrum. Well, we are doing what we're supposed to do. We are sublimating this oil. We're purifying it. We're purifying our bodies, alkalizing our bodies, returning the oil back to heaven. The head is short for heaven, which is short for heaved up. That's why your heel is down at the other end, down in hell. Heel, hell, he heaven. And so we have this beautiful alchemical laboratory in the body, and many people are just throwing all sorts of junk down their esophaguses. You know, they've got, oh, look, we've got aspartame and fluoride in the water, all sorts of toxic waste that legally has ended up in our food supply, legally, um, and it's there by design to cull the the uh, the, uh, the, goblin, the animals, in other words, that's how the controllers see it, the chattel, and it's also there to dumb, dumb us down. And this is why it's so important that we expose things like Teflon and fluoride and all of these disgusting things that that can uh, thwart this process 
it's a race against time for the controllers. If they can keep us dumb for as long as possible and we can miss out on this beautiful light consciousness shift that's coming upon us, well, it's already started since December 20, um, 21st of December last year. Now, and now that we are in the sign of the land, Aries, this is a big opportunity for all of us to ascend those oils. Big ascension will happen in this, in this month. Many things will happen in this month, folks. Um, there are four planets currently um, that are going to be transiting uh, in March, especially look out for the 27th of March. In three days' time, there will be big, big collapses in... in uh, I would say look out for institutions of government but also institutions of religions. There will be massive, massive um, bleeding, mm. massive damage, massive damage, and we get the stars are on our side. It, they will absolutely smash the fictions of governments and control and religions. They were there for a purpose. They've served their purpose. The purpose has expired. Um, all of these institutions no longer have co uh, current um, viable contracts. The uh, Federal Reserve has not renewed its expired contracts since the 23rd of December last year. They, they, they had a 100 years to do their damage. They did their damage. They are out of business. The Vatican is frantically trying to rearrange its structure because you'll notice that there's a Jesuit Pope. Well, Jesuit work for Saturn. It's the Latin Saturn Church. The other Pope was the Pope for Jupiter in the age of Pisces. He had to retire. He had to um, get out of office because Jupiter is no longer with us. It's Saturn. And this is why we have the first Jesuit in history. These guys are Saturnians. How do I know? Look at their uh, logo. You'll see the sun with the letters I-H-S in the middle. Uh, folks, the H in the middle, that is Saturn. Wherever you see an L or an H, that has to do with Saturn. So they're telling you that they are Saturnians. It's now the rule of Saturn. But unfortunately, they haven't got the memo yet that they will be no longer needed because we have awakened awoken and that's why they were around that's why they did their dirty deeds the inquisitions and the crusades and everything like that it was for the quickening of 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 humanity to speed up the process of ascension so that the suffering would would teach us these they're great teachers they might be evil oh yeah and they're pedophiles <laughs> and they're and they're rotten crooked crooked people but they are doing the work of god folks <laughs> and and god is not you know it, god is a two-faced god the demiurge the god of this world the electric universe is a demiurge so he's going to give good and he's going to give evil and he's been doing it for a long time now. This is why unity consciousness and unity speak is so important for us to get out of the dualisms and go back to unity where unconditioned consciousness is and which is our true nature. We can do it and we will do it. And the ones who do achieve this will have many blessings. The ones who fail, well, they're going to have another go somewhere else. But uh, good luck to them. It's very, very sad to see the blind leading the blind. And so this is why I'm very vociferous and I'm on the air as much as I can, folks. I'm, you know, I could, it's my birthday today. I've got family around and uh, I could be just, you know, drinking beer and sitting back and enjoying myself. I'm more happy to be on the airwaves because this information is crucial for humanity that is seeking ascension. There's, there's no time to loiter anymore. We can do it. We can embrace the light and we can be totally and utterly out of the darkness. Mm, yeah, happy birthday, by the way, Santos. Hey, yeah. you know, one of, the, one of the hardest things that I had to, uh, to struggle with to wrap my mind around 
was that double-edged sword when I looked out at the world, looked at religions, looked at our governments, looked at all the wars and the crap that's gone on in our history. You know, it, t- it took me a while to really accept and, and come to a place of knowing that there's a purpose behind all that crap that's out there, you know. Yeah, there is. Oh, absolutely, there is. Uh, and and this, the sooner we bring balance back to ourselves by eliminating ignorance, we, we're all we're all cursed with this ignorance because we are in human bodies. Um, having a human body body requires that we accept conditions on our consciousness. Mm. Um, consciousness is is free only outside of physical human bodies. But but that is our true nature. Our true nature is Sat Chitananda. Bliss, um, existence and consciousness. That's that's all our heart requires. We never require anything else other than those three things. To exist, to be conscious and to be blissful. And we we can do that. It's within our grasp. What we need to do is go into the stillness and bring back the light that's in there, in, 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 in our hearts, in our minds. We have that stillness. We have the magnetic um, stillness that, that we can just find by meditation. There are other ways. The best way to find that stillness and shut the, uh, the thinking mind down because it is thinking that is destroying, it's creating, we are creating demons, we are creating thought, thought, thought forms which are destructive to us. You see people that have got twitches and, and you know, they're, and they're hunched back and they're, and they're sort of, uh, you can see all these, these twitches, you know, that is a result of their own mind's doing. Right. And so we can free our minds, we can have powerful, clean minds, that are able to think all things because once we meditate and go into the knowing, we have all the answers there. There is no priest, there is no king that can uh, stand in for that process. This is why it's a blasphemy to see priests uh, alluring people and enticing them to, to their books. You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses are doing that. They actually go out regularly knocking on people's doors to right. get people to get people seduced into their Rockefeller funded mind control pedophile uh, corporation uh, and the Mormons are doing the same they've got the Smith family uh, Illuminati uh, bloodline family that has invented their Jesus to save their group and so all of these churches they're just a bunch of supremacists they are saved, and you're not. You know what I'm picking up off of uh, people right now, and what I'm well, what I'm seeing people do is is that as soon as they gain any sort of real balance, uh, you know, when they're the balance between spirit and mind, they're proactively doing something to help change this paradigm. Whether it's something they're doing in their communities, uh, community gardens, or watches, or 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 creating movements that are you know uh, inspiring other people, uh, going out doing uh, uh, sky watches for UFOs or f- writing a book or or something, they're doing something proactive, and that's and I'm just seeing more and more and more people find that place where they know that it, they're here to do something to help change this place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for, guys. Uh, that's obvious, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, something that uh, uh, Chris and I talked about in the first hour that I'd kind of like to get your input on, uh, the yuga cycle. Now, we weren't exactly... He, he, he talked about when it shifted from being a million-year cycle into the uh, parallel with the, uh, with the procession. Uh, wh- where are we at in the yuga cycle, in your opinion? Well, I'm going with, I, was, uh, I was talking about the, the Sri Yukteswar, um, sorry, Tom, to interrupt the, oh, the, no um, the, holy sci- the holy science and Sri Yukteswar and his take on, on the yugas being much, uh, shorter cycles. 
We've just got a minute and a half here, so uh, I don't know if we want to wait until after the break for that or not. But uh, I'll leave it up to you, Santos. Well, I'm going. I'm going with that too. Yeah, Sri Yukteswar uh, cleared up a lot of confusion over a hundred years ago when he wrote his little book, The The Holy Science, um, and he corrected some of the. Um, not that, not that the, the figures needed correcting. The Hindus are right on the money when it comes to, um, their calculations. But, but we, we must remember that there are cycles within cycles within cycles and, and, and it goes endlessly in this universe. So our 24,000 year processional clock, that's about the one that we need to, um, be in tune with. And after the break, I can go into that a bit more. Um, our processional year, which is between 24,000 and 26,000 years of duration, actually comes from the circumference of the sun, the circumference of the earth, the circumference of the moon. Um, all of those bodies that I just mentioned are tuned to procession. So we can Great. do that after the break. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, you're listening to the 100th Monkey Radio on the Truth Frequency Radio Network, and we'll see you guys after the break. Watch your potato. Could you be the one? Can humanity develop unity consciousness for all? Reaching out with body, mind, and spirit, Tom and Ramon invite you to join them on the 100th Monkey Radio on the Truth Frequency Radio Network to explore our changing times and piece together the evolution of our body, mind, and spirit. Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. Kings and queens and royal gents and popes and priests and presidents. Oh, welcome back to the 100th Monkey Radio. I'm going to have to change that intro now, I guess, since we're now on Saturday nights. Uh, so we have Santos Bonacci, Bonacci and uh, we have Christopher Sartain online with us. And Santos, before the break, we were talking about the yugas and the procession. And I have one more question about the yugas. Now, if I were to... I understand. I know what the basic uh, yuga uh, symbol looks like with the the uh, 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 golden age on top, gold and silver, bronze. However, however that goes. I don't remember the names of all of them. I'm not really well versed in it, but I do under know that picture. If I were to take and overlay a clock on that, uh, where would you say we are right now? I kind of picture us at uh, like seven thirty or eight. Um, I'm not following you. I don't understand exactly uh, what kind of clock. Are you doing a 24-hour clock? I don't know. Oh, a 12-hour tw clock, a, just a 12-hour clock. And you know the circle, uh, the way they, they put the uh, the icon for the Yuga with the golden age on top, uh, oh, yeah. and then the silver age is on the sides, and then the, then the, the uh, silver age and the bronze age, and then the iron age at the bottom. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, <clears throat> well, according to Sri Yukteswar, the golden age occurs when our sun is close to its binary. It's dual. He calls it a dual. Uh, and he says, in fact, I will read, read what he says <clears throat> straight out of the book. Now, very interesting. I've, I've, I've presented this in my information. He says, in page, on page 8 of the Holy Science, it says, We learn from Oriental astronomy that moons revolve around their planets and planets turning on their axes revolve with their moons around the sun. And the sun, with its planets and their moons, takes some star for its jewel and revolves round it about 24,000 years of our Earth. A celestial phenomenon which causes the backward movement of the equinoctial points around the zodiac. So, 
And then he goes on to say that the golden age occurs when we are closer to our, our, our dual star. Now, we know that we are not as close as we could be to Sirius. Sirius is hurtling towards us at 20 miles a second. So if it, if it is Sirius that is our, our binary, which a lot of great uh, scholars have concluded, well then, to reach the golden age of 100% pure unconditioned consciousness, you would need to wait another 12,000 years, or, I don't know, 8,000, 8,000, 9,000 years. And, and, and the, the, uh, vernal equinox would have to be around, I don't know, Libra, Virgo, Leo, but in particular Leo. But we're opposite now, we're in the age of Aquarius, you see. So, by the time the, the vernal equinox hits Leo, that'll be another 10,000 years. So, but what's happening right now is something totally different. We are going through the dragon's breath, the, the photon belt, the light of Sion. Um, it's a special little window that happens um, in the Aquarius-Leo axis. And Aquarius is there pouring out his spiritual waters on humanity simply because when you go through Aquarius, you get a mini golden age. So this is, a, this is an age that's going to visit us, that's going to enlighten us and, and pull us out of the Kali Yuga. Even though it's just the Dvapara Yuga, the second Yuga, it still receives this magical period of time that we are going to go through, the photon belt. And it should last at least a thousand years. It'll be, it'll be very, very strong. Uranus, Uranus is the ruler. Uranus is going to rule this period of enlightenment and Uranos in Greek means heaven. So we've, we've reached the heavenly kingdom of God that the Bible is talking about. We've, we've arrived. It's here. It's now with us. Hmm. So it's, yeah, it's up to us to, to make of it what we will. Well, that makes me think about that, uh, that thousand year period makes me think of that, that passage in the Bible where they're talking about Satan being locked up for a thousand years. Yes, exactly. Um, by, by natural, um, dynamics, by natural phenomena, it, right. it will happen, it happens cyclically. It's part of the cycle. That's why the so-called prophets of the Bible who were just diviners, speaking about the divine, which is astrology, um, that's why they could make accurate predict predictions, because they knew the great timekeepers, the professional year, for instance. They knew how it worked. So they could make these predictions. They could foretell things that would happen, because when one knows the stars and their position, then one can make these predictions quite comfortably, and they will pan out Exactly as the the forecaster or the diviner um, accurately foretells, because you can't go wrong with the science. It's so easy to make predictions with astrology. Uh, you've just got to be familiar with those orbs uh, daily. You've got to you've got to know their courses. You've got to know where they are all the time. It's handy to know where the moon is. Um, once upon a time. People did not do anything unless they consulted the moon. They had their moon charts, and they would see where the moon was because she is the one that uh, determines whether you're going to have a good day or a bad day. You mm. can have a good you can have a good night's sleep. You can do everything correct and wake up in a bad mood. And you know you might uh, blame certain forces. You know you drank too much or you ate too much or you overslept. It's got nothing to do with that, let's assure it. Everything, when it comes to your moods and luck and your non-luck, it all has to do with the planet. So all it's it. almost like it, it has a direct physiological effect on life, not just our bodies, but on the whole universe. Right? It's, 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 I'm, 
I don't know, maybe I'm having an epiphany here. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, the the effects, I always kind of looked at astrology just simply on the human terms, on, on how it, you know, affects our personal lives and how it affects our, the you know, the, uh, well, I even, you know, understand the way it will, you know, can even, you know, uh, forecast the, the destiny of nations and, and just about anything you, you can assign a, a birth date to. Uh, but, I'm kind of seeing it now where uh, those forces uh, are having a uh, an effect on the synchronistic aspect of life and the way everything works around us. Am I on to something here? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. When you realize that you are a light body, your body has a beautiful magnetic toroidal field surrounding it because one of those fields is about 60 feet in um, in um, diameter in diameter and 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 then and then there's another body much lighter but bigger than that which is connected to that toroid toroidal field and 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 so our magnetic bodies are in fields within fields within fields, and that's this is why you can walk down the street, and you can, you will all of a sudden someone will make eye contact with you, and you you're pretty much you extremely aware of them because what's going on is their psychic aura, their their psychic field is is merging with yours. Hmm. We, we are constantly doing this when we're rubbing shoulders with people in the same room with people. Our our bodies are, are in communion. You know, not physically. Um, physically, to have physical communion, well, you'd have to have sexual relationships. But but when you're in the same room with someone else, your 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 psychic bodies, your mental bodies, are in communion. They are merging together. You see, so. The same thing is going on with our brothers upstairs, the planets. They are creatures. They're not just rocks floating in space as, as educated types will, will have you think. Mm. Oh, they're just rocks. Oh, astrology. Oh, you're, are you talking about those rocks in the sky, Santos? You've got rocks <laughs> in there. You know, no, they're creatures. The sun is an archangel called Michael. That's Jesus Christ the Savior. Look, I'm coming in the clouds. The eye will see me. It's it's a literary masterpiece of the Bible, and it teaches you about all the planets and their character, their archetypal purposes, and their archetypal energies. So we know what the sun does. It's the vital archetype. It gives life to this planet. Um, right now, we are in Aries, the springtime, so you're going to see some blossom. Well, mm. that's life. Right. That's the sun doing that. The sun does that every year when it enters Aries. It produces blossom. The moon does not do that. Neither does Saturn, neither does Venus. None of the other planets do that. The other planets do other things. You see, the moon is the psychic, the soul. So she's going to be affecting our moods, our water. She will lift our water when it's full moon and we will be very temperamental. This is where you see a lot of crazy people come out of the woodwork on, on a full moon. More crimes occur on a full moon than any other day. Um, more arguments with spouses and, and family members and siblings um, because of the water. The moon is playing with our water. The sun is playing with our spirit. Or in other words, the vital force within us. Mm. Uh, Saturn, Saturn is also producing coagulation, you, you see. Uh, Venus is cohesive, Mars is motion. They're all doing their various work, but these planets are bodies, and they have great, big, magnetic, toroidal fields attached to them, which are attached by other bigger fields. And all of these fields that we cannot see with our eyes, they're all working together as a symphony. It's a whole symphony. This is why... This is why we all act in a certain way when there's a full moon. This is why we always 
act in a certain way when Mercury is retrograding or when Mercury is conjunct Saturn or when it's conjunct the Moon or when the Sun is conjunct the Moon or when Venus is conjunct Saturn. I mean, there's so many combinations and so many results and effects that they produce because what's happening is there's a whole sympathy of magnetic fields. And when one is disturbed, you see, when you've got a, a square or an opposition in your chart, you can be assured that there is disturbed energy in your person. And that's, and where, that's where our ability to actually do something with it, if we are aware of, of all these effects that, that are happening around us, that gives us, that empowers us to be able to actually either watch out for it or, man, maybe I just shouldn't go to work today type thing. Absolutely. Spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. And, and, and go, go. Go, bro. Yep. Oh, uh, I just wanted to, um, ask you about, uh, if, if you guys don't mind shifting gears just a little bit. I wanted to, to, to ask Santa as well, have the opportunity about, um, I, I really believe that this idea of, of salvationism comes, or came about as a direct result of our transition from hunting and gathering into farming and agriculture. You cannot find a single hunter-gatherer tribe on planet Earth that is salvationist. Okay, this, these, this is an agricultural uh, paradigm So and religion. And so my, my question to you, Santos, is how do, how do we eradicate the Vatican? How do we eradicate this salvationist uh, Christian uh, tradition and theology and dogma without going back to, you know, when we were hunting and gathering, we didn't think of ourselves as sinners. There was no such thing. We were in harmony with nature. Um, it was only when we started farming and playing God and acquiring property and separating ourselves from nature and killing and, and, and playing God with, with the plants and animals of earth, domesticating and farming and whatnot, that we saw ourselves as unnatural. We saw ourselves as sinful and having this original sin. So my question is, I'm really interested in how, how do we do what you propose to do and what I would, you know, would like to see happen and, and leave these antiquated belief systems behind? How do we do that without going back to, it sounds silly, but how, how do we do that without going back to hunting and gathering? You know, we're going to be an agricultural civilization um, with no end in sight. So how, how do we how do we transition into this Aquarian age and leave behind these antiquated belief systems, but and, and yet maintain our our current uh, way of life and, and, and farming and using agriculture without going back to living in a state of nature? Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big big question, and I think the best way to deal with the uh, horrible, horrible structure that has been set up in the world would be exposure. Uh, expose, expose the system. Um, you know, expose the doctors, for instance, that are saying, oh, fluoride is so good for your teeth. It's 100% safe. You know, <laughs> expose right. these cre creeps. You know, these guys have been paid to tell such lies. Um, the evidence, you know, it, when you do research, this is why good research, I base all of my stuff on good research, you know. I go to prime sources. I don't, I don't, you know, just jump on the, on piggyback of other researchers. Uh, and I, I do my own research. I don't present anything that does not come from my own hard research. And then in that way, uh, you can expose properly because many people are not equipped to, to do the work of exposing because they haven't really done their own research. They're only repeaters. They repeat what someone else said. And this type of um, person is probably not going to be as effective as if they devoted, you know, six or seven hours a day to research like I do. Uh, and then they come up with good fruits to share. And so... I think exposure is probably the best tool, tool that we have. Uh, how many times have the controllers been thwarted? You know, they, for instance, just an example, we know that they had plans for the London Olympics, you know, they were going to pull some shifties, but they were, there were so many articles and, and 
videos that turned up exposing the controllers and, and all of the the secret uh, stuff that went into the planning of the 2012 uh, Olympics. Even um, uh, the young man uh, Rick Clay, I think was his name, the guy that was killed or suicided or disappeared after he right. released his beautiful information about the Zionist Olympics. Um, we have to deal with these people. We must deal with their... The, it's a very heavily um, Zionist media. Uh, and the Zionists work with the Vatican. They are the same bunch of criminals, we're assured. And they will tell you everything things they need to tell you. They don't care whether they've got a lie through their teeth just so that they can get their way, so they can get their wars, so they can make money through Ponzi schemes. Um, and, and it's all about just a handful of banksters. Once these guys are exposed, what effect can they possibly have? Hmm. Yeah, what do we do? I mean, so so let's say we get, uh, I mean, the exposure is happening now. I mean, it is happening. I mean, just like you, you said, the, the stuff with the 2012 Olympics, I was really surprised nothing happened there because there was just every sign in the world that so they, they were going to try to pull something off. And, uh, you know, I don't doubt that they were, and I don't doubt that it was thwarted. Uh, you know, what do we do after the the exposure? I mean, I, I'm how do we pick up the pieces from that point? I mean, it looks like to me, oh, oh man, it's a it's a bear to wrestle around even in my mind, just trying to play out uh, any kind of scenario that is uh, really uh, balanced and beneficial for humanity, at least in the short term. I don't know. I don't, do do you see? What, do you think we have to go through the turmoil, uh, real tumultuous time? No, no, I don't think that at all. Um, there's there's there are good creatures in positions of power on this planet right now. Uh, we we are, let's say, when it comes to politics and influence, we are probably right down the bottom. But we're doing our work for this end, enlightening people. And you will find that help will come from above also. There's a lot of good work going on. There's a lot of prosecuting of criminals. You'll find that the Rothschilds and the Bushes and the Rockefellers are mostly in hiding right now. Many people are retiring, getting out of their jobs because they know that the light that is coming and the exposure is coming will be unbearable for them very, very soon. The creeps that are still continuing to pretend that they've got, you know, that they're still um, uh, operative and viable, uh, they're only making it worse, making it worse for themselves. They're, it's time now to repent and cease and desist. Um, a few, a few have realised this, and they've they've actually done this. They've changed. Uh, and they've gotten out of their wicked and corrupt uh, jobs because they absolutely know, and they always did know, that they were serving the wrong master. Mm. So it's time it's time to align ourselves with the good forces because we'll, we won't have to worry about the transition. How are we going to go to, you know, from fiat currency and and all of these poisons that we're so used to, how are we going to go back to natural living? Yeah, the light will come and it will direct us. We will be, we will be receiving the light that we are from higher realms to be able to cope. Hmm. Yeah, I think that, that that's where uh, the real type of faith kicks in. That uh, you know, instead of worrying about what what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I, and I, I know this about uh, how the universe works. At least it, for me, that when I do focus on the, the when I focus on the negative uh, in my own life, that I end up drawing more to more of that to me. But when I when I uh, am able to uh, visualize something, you know, visualize that happy future, that that fun time, you know, that that more of that has brought my way too. So. 
Yeah. So uh, we've got about uh, a little over three minutes left. Uh, Santos, uh, when are you going to get a book out there, bud? Uh, look, at the moment, I don't have the time to write a book. Uh, for me to get... Uh, we're going to do the m- m- documentary. That's very important to me. And I'm getting the message out with the, the means that I have, uh, radio, presentations, webinars. But when I do get a bit of a rest and my schedule is not so busy, I will put pen to paper because not only for for the value of the um, the information that will practically will be of such great practical help to mankind, but also it will be good for the writer. You see, writing, putting pen to paper, is the best way to connect with your higher mind. It's absolutely the best way to, um, to record your thoughts, your knowing. It's much better than just speaking. Mm, I yeah. agree. It's yeah. spelling, right? <laughs> it's very powerful. It is very powerful. It actually uh, balances the two hemispheres of the cerebrum and gives you access to the Akashic record. When I write, I write things that surprise me. When I speak, I'm just struggling all the time because mm. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with thoughts that are coming constantly. But when I write, I'm more relaxed and the thoughts are cleaner and far more sublimated in writing process. So I'll, I'll get to that. So you're working on a documentary now? Yeah, which we will produce in May in Ecuador. Yeah, I saw that one that uh, came out here this year, uh, what, uh, three or four months ago that you were in? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I can't remember. What was the name of that? 2012, The Crossing Over. Yeah, that was actually a very well put together piece. So I would urge anybody to, it's on YouTube, so I'd urge anybody to uh, take a look at that. And uh, your website, Santos? UniversalTruthSchool.com And uh, Chris, one more time, your website, bud. It's uh, CrestownYogaInstitute.com I want to thank both you guys for joining me. Uh, This is uh, uh, for the first Saturday night, Santos, and being your birthday. Happy birthday, dude. I'm just uh, tickled pink that you were able to uh, pop over here for an hour. I absolutely love your work and everything that you stand for, and you have the hundredth monkey support. And uh, hey, Chris, I didn't get a chance to ask you. What do you think about the hundredth monkey effect? Real quick, you got thirty seconds. Uh, it's the real deal, you know. I see it uh, happening all the time. As soon as uh, we get enough people meditate, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi said, you know, once we get, I think one tenth of the population meditating, that's it. We're done. You know, game over. Yeah. Uh, yep. So, you know, keep meditating, like Santos said. Um, the more people we can get meditating and clearing their mind and, and experiencing infinite consciousness here on Earth, uh, the quicker that 100th mon- monkey effect will take over and everybody will wake up, man. All right, all Good right. News. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, and uh, we love you guys. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance, and the love you deny is the pain you carry. 